So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Russia invades Eastern Europe. Now I've done videos where Russia invades Europe as a whole, but never particularly just Eastern Europe. And we all know Eastern Europe was already under the control of the Soviet Union back in the 20th century. So what would happen if Russia attempted to regain all this land and invade all of Eastern Europe? Now definitions of Eastern Europe are going to vary, but I'm just going to be doing it based on what I think is fair for both sides and what I think is probably just the most plausible overall. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new uh, subscribing really helps us out because we are aiming for 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year right now only around 45 percent of you guys are actually subscribed so if we get the other 55 percent to subscribe we will without a doubt hit our goal by the end of this year so anyway let's go ahead and jump right into this video so in the red here we obviously have russia now there is an ongoing conflict with russia and ukraine and that is actually not going to interfere with this video now i say that because the conflict would just kind of stem off of that and i do that pretty much every video so instead we're just going to mix it up a little bit and not have that involved but in order for this to fully work nato and the eu are just going to have to stop existing and that's kind of the case for like around 50 percent of my videos where the alliances just kind of disappear and that tends to make a more easier to follow video as well as a more fair video for the aggressor now before we all freak out in the comments just remember what i said earlier i'm doing this so it's more fair for both sides um i know that technically you could probably include bosnia and herzegovina croatia and slovenia into eastern europe because they used to be in yugoslavia but anyway russian troops are not going to enter into the blue team territory we're also going to assume that russia is fully at war with these guys so it's not going to be like ukraine where they're only partially mobilized the entire russian army is on the front lines over here and they're going to be pushing into the blue area so russia is now going to go for three offenses one in the baltics one in belarus and one in ukraine russian troops quickly float over into northern estonia and take out their capital with ease from here they push down and start to encircle parts of the army until eventually we see the capitulation of estonia now the baltic countries aren't necessarily the strongest countries in the world so going through these countries is probably going to be pretty easy for them thus they do have to account for the fact that kaliningrad is here blocking poland from a lot of these baltic guys they could just still go around and up like that but still we can probably assume by now that russian armies would mobilize out of kaliningrad also in real life russia currently only has like 7,000 people defending kaliningrad kind of weird because this place is a fortress but uh the rest of their soldiers are actually over here in eastern ukraine i just thought that was an interesting story but now russia pushes down and finally connects with kaliningrad which capitulates both the uh, western halves of lithuania and latvia and from here we have troops from these two countries falling into belarus where we have a defensive line being set up by the blue team so that northern defensive just went extremely well for russia it surprised everybody and even went better than russia thought it would now we have to go to the other two offensives so there's one in ukraine from here they push into the donbass area and other regions of ukraine as well as starting an offensive towards kyrgyzstan now russia does have a little bit of difficulty here just like they're having in real life we're also going to maybe assume that these guys are getting support from other western countries i'm not too sure on that one though because if they were then this would be a lot harder of a war for russia so let's just do this if you think this video is too fair for Russia, we'll say no, they aren't getting support. But if you think this video is too fair for the blue team, go ahead and say that they are getting Western support. That's called a win-win situation for me. Anyway, Russia starts another offensive into northern Ukraine, and this time they are focusing on pushing over towards Kyiv. And finally, we take a look at their third offensive, which is in the Belarus, and this is just an all-out frontline invasion. So in the first couple of months here, we can see that Russia is doing extremely well, and their plan is going according to plan. Plan is going accordingly. But from here, we see the troops that were already in the Baltic places starting to go down into northern Belarus, and this is where we see Belarus starting to fall apart as their military is not able to hold off the Russians. Russia manages to cut off Belarus from Poland, and from here they're going to attempt to isolate both Ukraine and Belarus. Russian troops flee into the countryside of Ukraine, so eventually they have to stop as they risk getting cut off. Speaking of being cut off, Poland attempts to do just that, but they do eventually fail. Poland also manages to push back Kaliningrad and start an offensive into southern Lithuania. Now this isn't going to be of Poland's interest as they are more focused on taking on Kaliningrad, and they even manage to gain a little bit of land from it. Now overall, Poland is just going to try to push the Russians out of here, and by doing that, they're going to take a very crucial place for Russia. Without Kaliningrad, they won't be able to really like use it as a central hub to to invade everywhere else because if you think about it the russians really don't have much control over the annexed areas because you know rebellions and militia groups and stuff like that but they do have solid control over Kaliningrad, so they can send stuff down into Kaliningrad and use it from there. If they were to not have access to Kaliningrad, then they would just have to use their Russian areas, or even worse, use the annexed areas, 
which would lead them to a possible overthrow of their puppet governments. A little bit of a spiel there, but going back into the conflict, we see Russia's offense in northern Ukraine continuing to pick up speed as they now enter towards Kyiv. Back over in southern Ukraine, the Ukrainians make an offensive, which promptly pushes Russia back and cuts it into two. Now, the Crimea Bridge is still here, so Russia has access to Crimea, and they use that access to successfully capture Kyrgyzstan, a major city in Ukraine. From here, they retake Mariupol, while the Ukrainians expand the front away from the city. Up north, we have a pretty bad thing happening, and that is the capturing of Kyiv, which isn't honestly a major setback for Ukraine because they still have a lot of major cities such as Liv... 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 I think is how you say it. And then of course you have Kharkiv, you have Mariupol, which is captured, uh, Sevastopol, and then the one that starts with Z is right about there. So it isn't completely over for Ukraine yet, but the loss of the capital is a big hit for morale in the Ukrainian army until we see the eventual capturing of Minsk. And from here, we have the surrender of Belarus to Russia. Now, Ukrainian troops are quick to push back into Belarus and take over any siege areas that Russia tried to take. And by doing this, they managed to push back the Russians in the north of their country. They then push down and around and threaten encirclement. That is until Russia does that to Ukraine and they lose a little bit of their army. So overall, a pretty ballsy move, but that cost them troops. So they're not gonna do that again. You see Russia's attempted spearhead being pushed back by Ukrainian and Polish forces, almost completely out of Ukraine. Ukraine. It is here that we also see Poland pushing further into Belarus and Lithuania, and a decision being made by the Russian High Command to withdraw their troops from this area and hold a defensive position back in Belarus. So with this new front line being set up, we have Russia kind of rethinking their strategy. Now I said they had three offensive, the first offensive went well, second offensive is halted, and their third offensive is ongoing. From here they decide to make a new offensive, and that offensive is going to be a combination of the first two, and they're going to focus on capturing this much of Eastern Europe, so it's going to go across the northern Ukrainian border and take over half of Poland. Now this is a pretty big offensive, but it would be very effective as it would cut Poland into two and probably also capture Warsaw, which is right there. So without Warsaw, they don't have a capital that uh, decreases morale and the people and the army. And also Poland is probably the strongest country here. It's probably close to with Ukraine. Actually, also Greece. I I gotta think about that for a second. But the stronger countries are over here in the north, and then we have the weaker countries in the south. So Russia's gonna wanna wipe these guys out, but the only problem with that is that they're hard to wipe out. So Russia starts that new offensive in the north, and it goes pretty well until it doesn't. Russian forces are completely stopped on all fronts and are unable to advance. We do see a little breakthrough in the south here, which eventually leads them to capture all of the southern Belarusian border. From here, they meet up with the Ukrainian offensive. So there was an attempt, and it failed. But Russia is going to continue their onslaught, and uh, they're going to play defensive over here in the north, and they're going to go on the offensive over here in the south. Once again, they want to wipe out the stronger countries, so Ukraine is their next big target as they start to focus their military on capturing the country. We have troops from all over southern Europe being flooded into Ukraine in order to stop the Russians advance. We see Russians connect up with Mariupol. We then see Russian troops cross over from the main territory and an encirclement of Ukrainian forces in the south near Crimea. Unlike the Mariupol holdout, this one doesn't last very long and the forces are wiped out. From here, Russians try to slither into Sevastopol, but it fails as they are pushed out by the Ukrainian army. They are pushed out so hard that they almost re-liberate Kyrgyzstan. Also, I just realized I've, I called Odessa Sevastopol multiple times. So, uh, yeah, Sevastopol is over here. This is Odessa. I was reading about the Hemera strikes on Sevastopol, so uh, I think that's probably um, where that came from. But can't wait to see all the comments that were going to correct me before they even got to this point in the video. Good on you guys. Good on you. Anyway, uh, yeah. Kyrgyzstan is almost liberated by the Ukrainian army. So Ukraine is able to hold out in the southern offensive and it goes pretty well. Meanwhile, the northern offensive isn't going too well. We have a massive outbreak over here in the east, which makes Russia push all the way into Ukraine. And this ultimately affects the southern offensive, which is forced to retreat out of the eastern area. From here, we see an up push from Crimea, which threatens to encircle a large portion of Ukraine's army. They then retreat out of the area and hold a defensive instead. The Russians up north attempt to push down again, but they are eventually stopped by a group of Romanian troops. And after a few more skirmishes along the front line, we see no more advance by the Russian military. So once again, we see Russia being stopped completely by the blue team here. Mainly because they have been focusing all their resources in this area, they've been able to push into Ukraine, so that's how they've been able to do that. Whereas they haven't been focusing on the defensive front over here, and that nothing's happened because they're just not focusing on it. But one major thing that has happened during this time in Ukraine is the complete capturing of Kaliningrad. 
And as I explained earlier, this is not good for Russia. Not only did they lose Kaliningrad, but we also see the Polish pushing into Lithuania and attempting to recapture the capital, which is all the way over here. But by attempting to recapture their capital, this would mean that Russia would almost get encircled and they're not about to have that. So then it starts to shift their focus back over here towards Poland. They push back this offensive and now they start to focus on capturing areas of Poland in which they enter into. Now this is going to be a bloody campaign. It's not going to be easy as Poland is a very nationalistic country. I don't think Poland would want to ever give up their country to Russia again. So they're going to do everything they can to keep it from getting invaded. This includes drafts and conscription and other things things that probably shouldn't be legal. But hey, Poland doesn't care and nobody getting drafted does because they don't want to be Russian. Up north, we see their offensive going into Kaliningrad starting to collapse as Russia retakes all areas of Lithuania. We then effectively see them retake all of Kaliningrad and this is a huge kick in the face to Poland. From here, they seep into Poland from Kaliningrad and Poland is forced to put their entire military on the fence, which even includes them withdrawing some troops over here in northern Ukraine. This withdrawal hits pretty hard in one particular area, which is held off by the Polish, which is um this area. And without this this area russians are able to break through and effectively encircle a bunch of ukrainians ukraine criticizes poland's move here but poland says hey we don't want to die and then ukraine's like hey we're already dying so they're both kind of mad at each other but nonetheless these ukrainians die and we finally see the complete occupation of belarus now the front line freezes once again as it's winter russia can't make any offenses because they're poorly equipped the blue team can't make any offenses because it's winter we all know not to invade russia during the winter so everyone just kind of waits it out and some believe that the war could be close to being over you know russia has a big chunk of land uh probably around a third of eastern europe and you know maybe they'll settle for that and they won't invade the rest of eastern europe well vladimir putin has other ideas in mind such ideas include restoring the old borders of the soviet union for some reason he chose to start in eastern europe which is probably going to be the hardest area to start in but winter starts to not be winter and it is now spring and russia had been planning a massive offensive in ukraine while the blue team has been planning a massive counter offensive on the entire front so when these two unstoppable forces come into contact what happens well according to newton nothing and the two offenses hit each other and there was literally no movement wait actually i just got word there is movement wow poland just moved the front line by a couple kilometers that's that's crazy ukraine also did it they got a couple miles as well but oh i just got horrible news russia just broke through a front line and they're going full force a bunch of russian divisions push right through a weak spot in the blue team's front lines and this sends the blue team into panic mode as the russians barrel towards slovakia why are they going to slovakia i have no idea why would you want to go to slovakia good question said russia as they stop their offensive towards slovakia because why but this does do one good thing for russia it cuts off communications between ukraine and poland as this uh spearhead right here can kind of disrupts that poland now has to make a little horseshoe to go into ukraine that's actually a good thing so they continue to push into slovakia who has done nothing wrong may i remind you that front is eventually stopped as russia now pushes out from the sides of the spearhead and here we see a great logistical failure by the blue team and um Russia makes this an official front line. That is no longer a spearhead. That is a whole front. Great going, guys. You really saved yourselves. Now that I'm looking at this area of Poland being split up like this, I wouldn't be too surprised if something like this were to happen. Anyway, back in Ukraine, the uh, counteroffensive is starting to fade, and Russia starts to gain territory, most notably over here near Lviv, which they eventually capture, and that is another major city that Russia has captured. Of course, they got Kharkiv earlier when they pushed into this area. Kyrgyzstan is currently under siege, and now that all that remains is poor old Odessa. Speaking of Odessa, paratrooper landing. That went surprisingly well, and they managed to take the city. Ukraine is furious about this. Okay, bro, what are you doing? We're defending our northern front. What about you? Ukraine dies. That is very unfortunate. But like we saw in Belarus, we have the blue team troops entering into this area, which has not fully been annexed by Russia. We actually even see the encirclement of Odessa. But with the collapse of the Ukrainian front, the blue team is now like, oh no, this is not good. The North Russians finally meet the Czechian border, which separates Poland from the rest of the blue team. And here we have some pretty smart calls being made. No, thank you, said Greece. No, thank you, said Serbia. We're good, said Albania, Kosovo, and Mon Montenegro. No, thank you, said North Macedonia. I'm good, said Bulgaria. Why did you leave us, said everyone else. Now, earlier on in the video, this was the original Eastern Europe I was going with, and I think it's probably a good thing that I included everyone else because it makes this more plausible. But at this point in time, Russia is pretty much going to have a certain victory here. Now, I'm not going to say that they're going to lose here, but the blue team is going to make some land gains. And this is just to kind of satisfy both sides because I know, I know that you, random person from Lebanon, or maybe random person from Slovakia, or 
I don't know, random person from Chad? Probably not, but maybe random person from Myanmar? Also probably not. Random person from the Dominican Republic. I got you. I knew you were watching. Don't be mad at me for this, even though this has nothing to do with your area. This is more focused at the Polish, Ukrainian, Eastern European group. I'm sorry. It's just I had to make it entertaining. So counteroffensive day goes well for the blue team as they push Russians out of Slovakia and effectively reconnect Poland with Romania. This is about all they're going to get from this, though. Poland is a little bit more of counteroffensive as the Russian morale starts to decay. And I'm not even going off of like me trying to satisfy both sides here anymore. Russia would probably start to lose morale at this point because, you know, this war has been ongoing for years and they just want to go home. You know, they got a good portion of territory. What's the point in continuing? We see the recapturing of Odessa and a big spearhead being pushed into central Ukraine. It is here that eventually Russia says, hey, we're done with this. We don't want to fight anymore. We just want the land that we've gotten. And the blue team out there having a very successful counteroffensive says, okay. So the two sides meet in Minsk for a peace treaty. All right, looking at this peace treaty here, we see that uh, Russia basically just says our Europe, or I don't know how I can really transform that into a joke. Your ARP? My Europe? But in this treaty of Minsk, we see complete annexation of all three Baltic states and Belarus, and we see Ukraine pretty much get clowned on by Russia as they take over, like, I want to say five-eighths of their territory. They also take over a chunk of Moldova. To be honest with you, they probably wouldn't get this much land, and I even originally drew this with a lot more land for Ukraine. I just really couldn't figure out how much land to give it, so this is what I was originally going to go with. But, you know, when looking at Russia, if we color it red, that just looks really ugly. And I know border-wise, that doesn't really matter, but, you know, just kind of helps. This could also be plausible. But then just remember, I end up going with this. Well, actually, no, because this is... Uh, I can't go back. But yeah, that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like I said in the beginning, only 45% of you guys are subscribed to the channel. You have like 55%. I don't know what you're doing. Why are you even not subscribed? How how dare you not subscribe to me? The, the audacity. I'm, all jokes aside, though, we are aiming for 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, which is... Oh my god, it's already October. It is already almost... 23 that's crazy i i'm i'm old but uh yeah so by the end of this year in two months we are pushing for around twenty five thousand more subscribers mm, hopefully we can do that but like i said subscribing really helps us out i really dislike doing this like asking for subscribers so i'm just gonna end it here once again thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video